Hey everybody and welcome to the Network Sherpa's Guide to 10 gig fiber transceivers. Today we're going to take a hands-on look at the four most popular form factors of 10 gig transceivers. You might be asking, well, why do I need to know so much about transceivers? Well, all of these are 10 gig transceivers, but as you can see, they're physically very different from each other. You're going to need to know the difference. Also, they're expensive items, uh, so you don't often see them uh, sitting side by side. I find that when I can see and touch the hardware, it's easier to learn and memorize the difference. And that's the intent of this video, is to show these to you. So let's get to it. Here you can see four generations of 10 gig fiber transceiver modules. You'll also see the SC and LC fiber connector types, which are used to connect to each of these modules. So each module has a specification defining the physical, its physical characteristics, also called its form factor. These module specifications are agreed between multiple vendors and they're called multi-source agreements or MSAs. Now, they're not quite standards, they're kind of pseudo-standards, so the word specification is a stand-in there. Um, all of these transceivers are compliant with the 10 gig standards, the IEEE 802.3AE standard, but as you can see, uh, there's a dramatic difference in size between them. So we have here the Zenpack, the X2, XFP, and SFP+. These names are confusing, and that's really, you know, the, the driving f motivation for this video is because I find it difficult to remember these guys. However, you should try and remember them, or at least bookmark this video, because, as we mentioned earlier, it can cause a lot of confusion if you can't discriminate between them. The reason for all the X's in the terminology is that X is a Roman numeral for 10, and SFP here stands for Small Form Factor Pluggable. And the plus for SFP means it's the 10 gig variant. We'll talk about the difference between SFP plus and SFP later. We'll start with the first 10 gig module, the Zenpack. As you can see, it's the largest transceiver. Now the Zenpack draws a lot of power, 8 watts in fact, or up to 8 watts. And it has cooling fins here to throw off some of the heat. If you look at the face of the Zenpack, you can see that it has screws for securing the module and it also uses the SC connector type. You can see that you won't fit too many of the Zen packs into a line card. Uh, you commonly see, see Zen packs in like 6500, the uh, original 10 gig line card, 6704 for the 6500. Next we'll look at the Zen packs little brother, the X2. You can see that the X2 is shorter than the Zen pack. It also has cooling fins though, so this, this guy is, is tr turning out only half, of the, or consuming only half of the power, which is about 4 watts, uh, but it still needs cooling fins. You can see it's not quite as deep, and the faceplate is a little bit smaller than the Zenpax. It also uses the SC fiber connector type. So the X2 is find, found in some of the oversubscribed 6500 line cards, such as the 8 port 6708, the 16 port 6716. And you'll also find X2 slots in like the 4900M router, or the older um, 3750E or 3560E switches. You also see it in some of the newer line cards on the Nexus, for example, in the M108, there's eight of these guys uh, in that Nexus switch line card. So let's have a quick look at the SC connector that works for both the Zenpack and the X2. It's a fairly large connector. You can see it here. It has, difficult to see here, but you can see the keys on the top, hopefully to avoid you getting uh, transmit and receive mixed up. Same for the X2, SC connector. And that's it. So let's now turn our attention to the XFP. You don't really see too many XFPs in Cisco gear. You can see the XFP here is, is a pretty solid form factor. It uses the smaller LC connector type. Um, but as I said, you, you'd see it in like the ONS networking gear from Cisco. You'd also see it from um, their high-end carrier gear, ASR9000, um, you're not going to see too many of these guys. 
Uh, you do see them though in in Juniper gear quite a lot in the MX960, the MX480, um, so they're quite popular in Juniper routers. And lastly, we see the SFP Plus. Now, this is the most common 10 gig transceiver you're going to see going forward. It has very low power consumption compared to everything else, which it's about one watt. Compare that with eight for the original Zen Pack, and it's tiny. So, as you can see, this is a very small form factor. It also uses the LC connector type. You'll fit quite a few of these SFP Plus modules into a line card or a um, smaller 10 gig switch. Um, some of the modern designs can even fit like 72 of these into a single uh, one or you um, form factor and that you know I guess that's pretty impressive. Now both the XFP and the SFP Plus use the smaller LC connector type. The reason I'm showing you this I know it's kind of laboring the point but I don't want you to get uh, I want you to remember that there are cabling implications to your decisions or your choice of transceiver. So that's, that's it, that's the demonstration of the fibre connectors and of the four different transceiver types.